Okay, good. Excellent! Now, let me just adjust this to make it fill the screen again. How is it? Is it too loud, too quiet? It's a bit loud in my headphones. Right, I'll try that. A little quiet. Okay. Let's try it. Let's try that. That should be about right, I think. And my camera didn't even work first time either, so I have no idea what's wrong with my computer. It might need a full reset or something. But, anyway, this is one of the many launch games for the Game Boy Advance, and in this stream I just wanted to play through a few of them, and also kind of test out the analog pocket dock as well. This is one that I've not properly played before, this one is called Konami Crazy Racers, and I really don't even know where you need to begin on this. Yeah, when it comes to Windows... I never have any trouble with my MacBook, everything works perfectly on there, but as soon as I turn this computer on, nothing wants to work, ever. It's so frustrating. Uh, right, what are we even doing here? Aim for the overall top spot in the Crazy Cup to get a license. Press the A button to accelerate. Right. Okay. Helpful. Take the test. You cannot take the test. Levels and lives, hello! First time chatter as well. How are you doing? How did you find my stream? Did you find it from YouTube? Did you find it from Twitter? Let's try Crazy GP. So this is basically like a Mario Kart style game. As I'm sure you'll be able to tell in just a second. Except it's got loads of Konami characters. And I don't know what their stats are. Find it through Twitter, awesome. Let's try going with the uh, weird Parodius Octopus guy. And it looks like you have to unlock the other cups as you go in. So let's get started with Crazy Cup. Here we go. And yeah. Starting to discover the Game Boy homebrew scene. Awesome. It's an incredible scene. There's so much cool stuff being worked on at the minute. And I do have some exciting things coming in the post in terms of Game Boy homebrew, so. Look forward to more homebrew videos coming soon as well. Right, I don't know what the power-up system or anything's like in this, or... Okay, so it's kind of the same as Mario, where you use the L button to drop the power-ups. Looks like those blue crystals are basically this game's equivalent of bananas. That's the equivalent of a red shell. Found me through YouTube, by the way, 3DS and DS games. Awesome. And my Game Boy Advance games, uh, Top 15's doing really well as well, so hopefully that brings some more people over to the channel. You're playing Mud Warriors. I've heard that's a good one. I haven't played that one yet. What kind of game is it? Anyway, on the topic of Game Boy Advance, did anyone get one on day one? Back in 2001? Or did you start with the SP or the Micro? Or did you find out about GBA games through the DS? That would be an interesting beginning to the system. I have no idea what that mole does. It doesn't seem to do anything. Like South Park for the Game Boy Color. That's interesting. The uh, the controls on this actually feel a bit tighter than Mario Kart, which is interesting. It doesn't feel as slippery as Mario Kart. This is a very Mario Kart looking stage. Whoa, now it's a bit like F-Zero. Very narrow course too. Now I'm not sure what the difference between the blue power-ups and the red one is. I'm guessing blue is speed power-ups and red is um, attack power-ups. Yay, we're in first. Much shorter, but it's really good. I'll definitely check it out at some point. You got one when Arctic White came out. Ah! I'm trying to read the comments. I have my silver one. 
right here. I did actually get a purple one originally, but I think I traded that in at some point. So I don't have that one anymore, unfortunately. I'd like to try and get another purple one at some point. And you'll be hearing my story about the GBA on Friday anyway, but I, uh, it was basically the first system that I actually got on day one, so I have a lot of really fond memories of the launch games for that system, because I was so excited for it. I've been reading about it in magazines and stuff for ages before it was released. Whoa, what happened there? And yeah, I read a lot about Konami Crazy Races, but it's one that I never actually got, so I was quite excited to give it a go today. And I seem to not be doing very well on it, but it seems like a nice Mario Kart clone with some really nice jolly music. And I've actually been doing a lot of research into the history of the Game Boy Advance as well, so in this video on Friday you'll be hearing a lot about prototype versions of the system and all sorts of pre-release content, different different prototypes, different colours that were never released and things like that. I don't know why I just got turned into a pig, that was quite strange. Con random Konami humour. Oh, that's what made me fall down after that jump earlier going into the holes. Wow, I'm doing terribly on this one. I'm down on sixth place. That's not good. So the um, the launch games that I got with the system were, for some reason, I decided to get Pinobi instead of. Uh, no, I think I got Mario as well. I'm trying to remember now. I definitely got Pinobi Wings of Adventure. I think I got Mario Advance, which is basically um, a port of Mario 2, which I really enjoyed back in the day, so I was really happy that I got to play that on a handheld. But I know some people were a little bit confused as to why Mario 2 would be getting the port treatment rather than any of the other Mario games. Uh, by the time the GBA came out, you're too busy with the PlayStation. But what about something portable? You can't take the uh, PlayStation with you. It's kind of surprising that Sony didn't try and do a handheld earlier than the PSP. It would have been really interesting to see what they'd do with maybe something around the same power as the PS1 but a handheld. Although... I guess Nintendo was too much of a monopoly in the handheld market at the time. Never went anywhere. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I used to always go to my nans after school, so I didn't have my consoles there. So I got a lot of playtime on the Game Boy, the Game Boy Advance, and then the DS through my school years. They were really good times. And I got to play a lot of games, and she would buy me new ones quite often for it as well. And we used to have a pre-owned game shop in the in the market, which was within walking distance. So sometimes we'd just take a trip up there and pick up a new Game Boy game or two, which was which was really cool for me at the time. Oh yeah, Advance Wars. If you saw my last video on Friday, Advance Wars was my number one pick. My number one favourite GBA game. Although I kind of cheated and included both of them. And then some people in my Discord were laughing and saying it's not a Retro Break top games list without at least including two lots of games that are more than what it's meant to be on the list. Ah, uh, spam. I need to get a mod to get rid of stuff like that. Do you remember how much the games were? I think they were 30 quid. 29.99, I think. I've been looking at some old magazines from the time, and I'm pretty sure I remember them either being 24 or 29, which is quite reasonable, I'd say. Yeah, it's reasonable. And I was listening to a podcast about the launch of the GBA a few days ago, and they said that some stores even had an offer where you would get, if you bought two launch games, you could actually get a third one for free. Which is crazy. That's kind of unheard of these days, to be given a free game at the launch of a console. You know, in addition to the ones that you bought, so... That must have been pretty amazing for kids back then, to get three brand new games for their system. Yeah, 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 I did much better that time. 
came in second. Why doesn't it give me any sort of moderation abilities on Streamlabs? I get these chats here sometimes, but I literally can't do anything with them. I can block. I wonder if that'll remove the... Ah, oh, never mind. Here's there. Maybe Streamlabs, Streamlabs isn't the best thing to use then, because it is really kind of glitchy, I've found. I think that's where a lot of my issues are stemming from. Is this like a Rainbow Road equivalent? Whoa, the, the floor's kind of weird. It doesn't have any texture on it. The Retro Count! Thank you so much for the follow. Really do appreciate that. And I did say a long time ago that when I reached 300 followers, I would stream Sonic 06 again. And I think I've passed that now, so... I need to do that at some point. Oh, listen to this music! How cool is that? We've got some classic Proteus tunes. I'm just imagining that giant woman with the frilly dress on. You have to slide underneath her legs. If you've played Parodius, you know what I'm on about. But if you haven't, then that probably just sounds really weird. Whoa, what's going on here? Is this... Okay, it's just some sort of speed up thing. It's not actually steering me. Can I drop the bomb behind me? Yeah. I'm very well, thank you Retro Counts, how are you? And how did you find the stream as well? Did you find it through YouTube or Twitter? Or Discord? I'm trying to figure out where I post the links and where people come from. Or did you just find me browsing Twitch? If that's even an option. I guess some people find people through that. It's all post on Twitter. Oh, awesome. Twitter is still alive then, despite everything. I, I shared something else on Twitter earlier actually that's really exciting. There's a uh, retro gaming console, handheld console history book that's coming out. And they actually gave me an affiliate link for that, so I shared that earlier. By Lost in Cult, which is like a, um, a new organisation that's doing sort of indie, but really in-depth gaming magazines. And they're branching out into the retro stuff as well. So I'll be very excited to get my hands on them. And I've been doing a lot of research into handheld history myself, actually. So it'll be interesting to see what they've found. Whether there's anything I missed. And who knows, maybe one day I can be a contributor, that'd be cool. I am contributing to another secret project that's coming out. What's the most used social network for retro gamers? Twitter, I guess. That's the one I use the most, and that's the one where I've found a lot of friends. Although, Twitter's the only social media I use, so I wouldn't really know outside of that. I'm just glad it's still around, honestly. I know some people left to go to Mastodon, but... I tried that, but there's just not... It's awkward to use, and there's just not an audience for it, really. But I've got an account on there. But, you know, I can't really split my time between too many different social medias. It gets a bit overwhelming. Yeah, Twitter's the best place. It just worked. Well, and, until Musk took over, but, it, you know, it's still the best place to find people and just talk about stuff that you enjoy. There isn't really any alternative. I know people were saying Hive's the new alternative, but, yeah, no. Hive is awful. I tried it. It's just so clunky. Right, let's see what these are then. There's different tests here. So, a time attack. I have to try and finish this course in under one minute by the looks of it. And we're going to be taking a look at some of the other launch titles for the GBA as well. I'm going to try out some of the ones that I had back in the day and then some like this. That I missed out on, but I ended up playing a bit later on. And there's a few that I've never played before as well. I downloaded all the ROMs and dumped them all into the analog pocket earlier. I don't know if there's any sort of um, power slide or anything in this. It doesn't seem like there is. I'm trying to jump and drift, but nothing's really happening. Hey, if anyone's played Konami Crazy Races, do you know if there's any, like, tricks to, to go any faster? Like Mario Kart? Because I'm trying to drift here and it's not doing anything. Hey, another follower! Set Zero. Thank you. 
how are you doing this evening? Or wh whatever time of day it is in your time zone. And I've been asking everyone else who's joining this stream as well, how did you find the stream? Did you find it through Twitter? Did you find it through YouTube? Or did you find it through Discord? Fail! Oh, I failed by five seconds. That's no good. I like Instagram for retro social media, actually. I like seeing people's setups. Instagram's good if you've got something to take a picture of, but Twitter's better for just talking. Yeah. Yeah, Twitter's still number one. Uh, should we do another... Let's see whether we can do another GP. Do I choose it from inside? I'm not really sure what you get for those time trial things. Let's pick another character. It's a very strange set of characters. Does anyone know who all these characters are? I only really recognise Goemon. And that guy from the baseball games. And that octopus from Parodius, but... I don't know who the other characters are. The random Moai statue head. That girl looks familiar, but I'm not entirely sure. No idea who that guy is. I don't know who that is either. Let's try going on. I'm guessing he's basically the Mario equivalent. How do I get to the other races? Do I need to do the... Do I need to do the license things? Tests can be taken to obtain licenses. The higher the license, the more courses are available. Okay, so I do need to do this first. Alright, let's try this again, see whether we can do it in under one minute. Wow, I've definitely gone over 300. 352 followers now. So yes, to the gates, if you're still watching, I'll stream Sonic 06 soon. Maybe next week I can go back to it. Right. I'm guessing the pink is the fastest floor for this stage. It's a bit annoying that there's no sort of techniques you can do to go to go faster. There is another racing game I want to try out as well. Um, Top Gear G, Top Gear GP, Top Gear GT, something like that. There was another launch title, so maybe we'll check that out next, and we can compare it to this one. Oh, I don't want to go in the water, that'll slow me down a lot. But I think we've done it this time. No, maybe not. We have five seconds. Four, three, two, no. Ah, oh, we were a bit closer. One minute and one second. I'll try and take the inside line. Let's try again. Go. try and jump over some of the corners as well. Maybe that's the trick. Uh, don't crash into the palm trees. I like the music. It's quite relaxing on this level. Is this actually from any Konami game or is it just a random beach? I think I'm doing better. Why does the last lap feel like it's longer than all the other ones? Two! Yeah, we're two seconds to go. We did it. Look at his weird octopus face from the front. It looks like he's crying. What's wrong? We we did it. We got our B-Class license. We have to do another test as well. Aim for the number one spot in a match race. So we've been teamed up against... Weird Blue Crab Man. Let's take him out with a missile. I don't know why he fired a missile. I wasn't in front of him. Oh well. It was a launch game. I can let off some kind of weird AI. Yeah! What was he doing? Oh, how did I not get that? Let's go in there and get the power up. 
Having the different colours mean different things kind of reminds me of Diddy Kong Racing a little bit with the different coloured balloons, which is pretty cool. Ah. Uh, I wonder if there's only one type of... No, there's, there are different types of speed boosts, aren't there, with the blue ones, because we had something earlier that was kind of pulling me along the track, which was different. I'm not sure what that is. That's like the boo in Mario Kart, I'm guessing. That's like the bananas. Okay, you can't fire them backwards. Seems like a really competent game though, especially for a launch title. And I think coming from the Game Boy Color, this would have been really impressive to see. Just the fact that something's going into the screen was impressive in itself back then. For a handheld. Yay, we did it! We're now B-class, does that mean I can go and do another Grand Prix? You have this game! Awesome! Did you get it, like, when it was new, in 2001, or did you get it later on, after Mario Kart had come out? Can we go to the next one? Yeah, we can do the next one. Alright. Let's do this one, then we can move on to the next game. Out of the way. Oh, cool, we're on a baseball court. That's an interesting design for a level. I don't think I've ever driven around the inside of a baseball court before, that's new. Oh my god, there's baseballs bouncing around everywhere as well. That's very inventive. I don't know what the coins do yet. Oh, awesome. What did you think of it back in the day then? I think this would have been really impressive to play back in 2001. Oh no! That's not fair! There's no way of dodging them. Okay, the bomb's something that goes behind. Did, what other games did you get for the GBA back then? We're going to be taking a look at a few others tonight as well. A few other launch games. Loved it back then. Brilliant. Ah, oh, second! That's no good. Loved it playing in multiplayer as well. That's cool. What's the multiplayer like? Does it have a battle mode as well, like Mario Kart? I only picked this up randomly, like in late 2000s, maybe, at a convention, so I don't really have any sort of nostalgic attachment to this game, but I thought it was really good, though. Definitely one of the better Mario Kart games. F-Zero and Castlevania were the first two. Two really great games. Did you ever struggle playing Castlevania because the, uh, the original didn't have a backlight? I know some people complained that it was too dark. Oh nice, I like how the sky is changing colour on this one. Again, I'm not doing very well though. There is a tiny little bit of lag, because I'm using the Bluetooth controller with the analog pocket, and then playing it through the stream capture, so... I think I'm doing okay, all things considered. I have been thinking about getting the 2.5 or 2.4 gigahertz version of the Super NT controller instead, which might be a bit better. Just sat next to a window and went outside. Yeah, I think some of the uh, criticism about the fact that the GBA doesn't have a backlight are kind of overblown a little bit. I never had any trouble with it. I was just really happy that I was getting new Nintendo games at the time. I didn't care that I needed to sit in front of a light or whatever. I mean, I've been playing on the original over the past few days and after a few minutes, you just kind of get used to it, really, but... Uh, obviously, it was nice when they did include a backlight screen. Although, some people aren't massive fans of the form factor of the SP, though. Oh my god, come on! This is like Mario Kart Wii levels of bullying. And there was actually a kit you could get for the GBA before the SP came out, called the Afterburner kit. So I don't know whether anyone's got any experience with that. I have no idea how good that was, but it was basically like um, a replacement LCD or something you'd put behind the LCD to light it up. So it'd be interesting to see how that compares to some of the newer IPS kits that you can get. I wonder whether you can still get the old afterburner ones anywhere. 
I remember reading about them in the magazine, and they actually had a, a section next to every review, and it said better with backlight. And they were actually advising people to go out and get the afterburner kit. I don't know whether it drained the battery life a lot as well, because that was one of the reasons why they didn't go for a backlight in the first place. Because of the um, power consumption that having a backlight would bring. And obviously, back then, Nintendo was really big on trying to get as much battery life as possible out of their handhelds. Something that I wish they'd kind of stuck with a bit more, because the Switch and the 3DS really kind of suffered in the battery department compared to the Game Boy systems. I mean, with the GBA, you could get like 15 to 20 hours out of two batteries, which is insane. And the original Game Boy, even more than that. And when I was doing some research for my next video, apparently the Project Atlantis was actually going to feature a 30 hour battery life, which I don't think was even possible back in 97 when they thought that was coming out, but I'll take that one with a pinch of salt. It, apparently it was going to take five AA batteries as well, but last 30 hours, so I guess that would be a worthy trade-off, although it would make it kind of heavy. Ow! Uh, I'm trying to read your comment and steer at the same time. I have a box of GBA games next to me, but I can't remember which are around the launch. I'll show you the launch list in a minute, because I've got them all on here. I've got all my GBA games in that light box over there, and for some reason the light's actually on. They're still in there from when I did the thumbnail for my last video. I don't even know where first place is. Oh, I was miles behind. How many more races? Two more? Not sure. Man, the, uh, the script for my video on Friday is getting so big I might have to split the video in two. I've still got so much more that I want to write and add to it, but I need to stop at some point and actually start, you know, actually start recording it. So we'll see what Friday's video turns into. It's going to be something to do with the history of the Game Boy Advance. I just haven't completely decided how I'm going to structure it yet. I always keep thinking that I want to try and get ahead in videos so that I've got kind of a buffer of a few weeks so I don't need to stress too much before Friday. But I'm not there yet because each video literally takes all week to make and then it's literally straight on to working on the next one. And my day job is getting busier and busier so I'm not finishing that until like half five, six o'clock most evenings now. But it's going well. I started a new job back in July and things are finally starting to pick up. I've got loads of projects on the go now. And lots of responsibilities as well, which I wasn't really expecting when I signed up for the job, so... It's all a lot to take in, but it's all good. I'm learning a lot. Obviously, I would rather that my job was YouTube, and then I could just focus on making even bigger and better videos. Maybe one day. I did get another Patreon supporter um, a few days ago, which was exciting. So I've nearly got 30 on there now, which is really cool. And I possibly have just hit 25,000 subscribers on YouTube, too. I've been watching it all day, and it's creeping up. My GBA video did really well. And we came second. We're going to have a look, actually. I was so excited that I nearly hit that milestone. Let's see, shall we? <gasps> I did it! 25,003! Woo! How exciting. Have I got a... window? I want to show you this. Ah, look at that! It's gone up again! 25,004! Oh my god! Look at that jump! From when I released the GBA video a few days ago. That's crazy. Do you want to see something even crazier? 
if I go on lifetime. Look how long my channel was around and literally nothing happened. Literally from, you can't see 2007, 8 and 9 for some reason. But at the end of, towards the end of 2009 I was on 65 subscribers. And it literally didn't start taking off until around January 2019. And then look at it since then. That's crazy. I've been waiting so long for anything to happen, so, you know, the fact that it's actually started to do something after, what, 16, 15, 16 years, is insane. Look at the last year, there's been a few, a few little jumps there and there, but with my GBA video, that's been the biggest one ever so far, so that's just super exciting. So. I'm just so happy at the way things are going at the minute. And I came second. Yeah, dedication to the extreme, I think. Anyway, here's the list of Game Boy Advance launch titles that we've got. I didn't even know some of these were launch games. I knew Army Man, Army Man was. I knew uh, Castlevania. F-Zero, obviously. I, got, I didn't get that one day one, but I got it close to day one. Kuru Kuru Kuruin, apparently only came out in Europe as a launch title. Rayman is the other game that I got on day one. I got Rayman, Mario Advance, and... Oh, did I not put Pinobi on the list? Is it in other? Let's see whether I've got it on here. No, it's not there. I wanted to play Pin Pinobi. I'm going to actually download Pinnaby, so give me a second. Oh yeah, and I'm using the Analog Pocket Dock. Okay, we can try Soccer Manager in a bit. I'm going to put Pinnaby on it first. Oh, actually, maybe I don't need to, because I, I can actually play Game Boy Advance carts on here, so... Let me see whether I can find it. And actually, I'll show you... If we go on full screen and put in... Oh yeah, something else that broke can't see my webcam anymore for some reason. I need to re-add it every time. So if I put that on there, there you go. And if I put that down there. Down. Not that far. Down there. There we go. Yeah, Tony Hawk's was one as well. So let's see. Let's see how far this can go. Not that far. Can you see in the light box? Spin it around. There's all my GBA games. Pin OB is going to be in there somewhere, so let's see whether we can find it. There's one of them. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. Oh yeah, I was preparing for next week's video, so I got all my different GBA consoles out as well. I'm so glad that I got this one in Japan. 20th anniversary Game Boy Micro. Look how nice that is. And the screen on the Micro. Just incredible. So cool. And there's my original one too. Anyway. Let's find Pinnaby. I hope it's in here. Hmm. hmm. After all that, I couldn't find it anyway. I did find Rayman though, so that's another one we can try. Anyway, let's go back over to main cam. And I'm going to download Pinnaby. So, I'm doing it on my, on my MacBook, which is over there. 
So bear with me one second. I love this on the fly kind of streaming. How's everyone doing? I've got 13 people watching me try and download a game. Don't tell Nintendo. I do own it officially somewhere. I don't know where the box is either. I'm sure I had it somewhere. All right, it's on. Now let's put it back in here. And fingers crossed, we can just turn that on and put it straight back in the dock. There we go. Is it going to load? Slowly. I don't know why it loads onto that screen by default. You have to close it and then go in. Uh, yeah, yeah, there it is. So we can put that back in there. Hopefully it just comes straight back up on the screen. Yay, it did work. Right. Let's put the camera back on top. There we go. I'm so glad I bought all these as well. So I got this stand to go on the desk with a quick mount at the top so I can take the camera off from behind the screen and just attach it on this. And then I can just put that on the desk and slide it around, which is so much easier. Hey, getting a raid with a party of 10, and I'm not even playing a game, but thank you so much, Hero of Hylia. We're about to. We're about to play some GBA launch games. We were just playing Konami Crazy Races, and you can kind of see behind me, but I was just... I was just showing everyone my light box full of GBA games. Uh, if I get out of the way, over there, you can just about see them. It's going well, thank you. We're taking a look at some of the games that launched with the Game Boy Advance. And one that I got, day one. If the control wants to connect again, was Pinobi. So let's give that one a go. Did anyone hear of this game? Hey, Dumpy, Dumpy Steam. Hello, how are you? What have you been watching Hero of Hylia play? Oh yeah, if you recognise the name Artoon, I'm pretty sure they're the company that went on to make some of the Yoshi games. And maybe some other games for Nintendo as well. Yoshi's Topsy Turvy and Yoshi's Island DS. But before that, they made this game called Pin B Wings of Adventure. Which is actually a game that I got day one when the GBA launched back in 2001. Oh yeah, I love that. So, uh, basically the thing that I remember about this game is that as you're going through the levels, you can gain more dash abilities. I can't remember whether you can actually hurt the enemies yet. Yeah, so basically you get the ability to dash further. I don't know why his head grows like that. I think they were just showing off the fact that the GBA could scale sprites. But yeah, I didn't have Mario on day one. I had Rayman and I had Pino B Wings of Adventure. And you know, as a... What would I have been at the time? Nine years old? As a nine-year-old kid, I didn't care. I just thought, oh, it's amazing. I got a new Game Boy and a new game. Okay, you kind of got a hover ability, kind of like... Kind of like Yoshi, but really awkward. I'm not sure what... Oh, you can jump on the enemies. Okay, it's not very clear that you can actually jump on them. Anyway, a super interesting thing about this game that I didn't know until many years later is the fact that it actually came out on the PlayStation 1 as well. I wonder whether I can break through there. No. Must have to come back when I've got some sort of punch or something. 
I haven't played this game in like 20 years, but I remember this music. Uh, I don't know whether I can just go straight to the exit or whether I need to try and collect the rest of the flowers. There's one. Looks like you can do that infinitely anyway. <laughs> oh, something else that just triggered an old memory in my head. When you go through that door there and he's going into the screen like that. I was, my mind was blown. I thought that was the coolest thing I'd ever seen. I was like, I even ended up like showing it to my parents and going, look, the GBA can do 3D. <laughs> like, it's not really 3D. It's literally just a sprite going into, <laughs> into a door. But at the time, you know, obviously I'd been reading all the rumors in the magazines and stuff. And I thought, oh my God, it's 3D. I've heard about this. It must, this must be what it means. Uh, so naive. Anyway, it looks like you get a diary entry at the end of each stage six, at the end of each stage two. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe I was so stupid. May 1st, this fairy lady woke me up today and told me grandpa had been captured and that I had and that I had to save him. Why doesn't she save him? I remember grandpa telling me to turn on the seed sewing machine yesterday, but I forgot where it is. Oh well. I beat the golden enemy today. I slowed the enemy's evolution. You know what, this kind of reminds me of Pikmin, the way that you write a diary entry at the end of each screen. Ah, oh, I remember this music too. Why am I floating? Okay, you can press up to float for some reason. Just float in place. Oh my god, this music. I haven't heard this music in so long. This is so weirdly nostalgic for me. I feel like there's something there on the left. I think the game does get more interesting the more you get into it. You, I definitely remember unlocking some different things anyway. I don't know what the flowers do. Has anyone watching ever seen or played this game before? I'm sure I remember there being a secret in one of the walls as well. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know you could do that. Well, my ten-year-old self knew you could do that, but I didn't. I really want to try and track down the PS1 version someday. That'd be so interesting. We got something, a card that says number three for some reason. That's the secret I was, rem I was remembering. I do kind of have a really fuzzy memory of this game. It's pretty interesting to see what I can remember and what I can't. Yeah, I really want to try and track down the PS1 version. It's so interesting for several reasons, like, not only is it a PS1 version of a GBA launch title, which in itself is really strange, but it's also a PS1 game made by a team that would go on to make first-party Nintendo games. And, you know, those two facts... I think I just lost something down there. Hopefully that comes back. But yeah, those two facts put together make it such an interesting obscurity. And I never see anyone talking about this either, which is kind of weird. I think I missed that completely. Whatever was there. It also kind of reminds me of Rayman a little bit. So I guess having those two on launch day was pretty good because I really enjoyed my platformers. And I really wanted to get Army Man, Army Men for the, the GBA launch as well, but I never got that one back then. That is very Yoshi, isn't it? Using that hover thing. Yeah, I don't know why. Why does his head get so big? I swear they were just showing off the fact that the GBA can scale sprites. Hello? Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Is anything going to happen? He just changed the music. For some reason. That was strange. Could they just not think of anything to get him to say? Okay, there's the exit, but it seems like there's a lot more to do in this stage. I remember really scouring these stages back in the day, trying to find everything. There's a secret down there. How do I get to it? Looks like there's kind of a homing attack as well, in a way. Let's see if we go back up. Maybe I need extra dashes. Let's come back. May 8th, Cozy Forest 2. I saw a cricket outside and asked him if he knew where Grandpa was taken to. 
He said, probably somewhere outside the forest. I bet Grandpa is off having lots of fun somewhere. I'm going to go find him. I beat the golden enemy today. I slowed the enemy's evolution. That was something as well. I think there's a golden enemy hidden in each of the levels that you have to try and track down. And then it makes the later stages a bit easier. I don't know what these are. I'm unlocking some sort of card. Oh, here we go. Um, why would I want to drop them? It doesn't say what they actually do. Effects? Okay, I have no recollection of this. Oh, this is where you get the extra powers. Do you need to, like, fill the grid up or something? Flowers energy value will double. Don't know what that means. Yeah, so it seems like you have to collect things and it'll fill these up and when it's full. I don't know why you would choose to drop them though, that seems a bit, seems a bit strange. So it's a pretty interesting game. I thought that red was going to hurt me then for some reason. Don't know what that is either, is that like an energy tank? Ooh, listen to that cool. People like to complain about the GBA sound chip, but I think, you know, it's okay. The main issue was the fact that the sound is actually done through the CPU rather than a separate sound processing chip, from what I was reading about, which makes it quite difficult to get good sound and good, um, you know, technically a good game at the same time. You can kind of have one or the other. Which, interestingly, is the reason why... Oh, okay. Just give it me. Dash plus one. So yeah, having to having to program the sound into the CPU is actually the reason why... Why the second Castlevania game sounds so bad, and that is because they put a lot of time and effort into making the graphics as good as they could be for the system. Ah, uh, that's why you hover in the air. So you can set off your second dash. I'm really enjoying playing this again as well. I know it may look kind of simple, but this was my childhood for a long time, this game. And since then, you know, I haven't really gone back and played it since, because it's not really, you know, it's not really a very impressive game, or it's not really, it's not really got that much going for it. But it's just cool from a nostalgic point of view that I can go back and play it again today. But uh, we'll swap games in a little bit. We can try football manager, sure, why not? Man, this D-pad on this controller is starting to hurt my thumb a bit, though. Nothing else up here. So, everyone watching, what do you think of this game so far? Do you think it looks good? Do you think it seems interesting? Would you have been happy with it as a launch title? If you got it back in the day? Did anyone know about the PS1 version? Yay. I don't know what they do. There are some really good soundtracks for the GBA as well. I don't think it gets the credit that it deserves all the time. May 15th. I found a big flower. It's bigger than the one in One Cozy Forest. I like how that's the actual name of the area. One Cozy Forest. Not just Cozy Forest. This place was genuinely called Three Cheerful Flower. When I got closer to checking it out, I started to feel really good and very sleepy. I beat a golden enemy today. I slowed the enemy's evolution. Let's see what other options there are in the menu. Oh, is there no option to actually go out of the level when you're in it? Okay. Yeah, Castlevania is probably a better launch game. I won't spend too long on this one, but okay, let's check out Total Soccer Manager. How exciting. Here we go. To the gates, so are you watching? This is for you. And I'm going to scare off everyone who just came over from that raid now. It's got funky music. Bum, 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 bum. 
Oh, talking of music, there was a pocket music maker for the GBA that I played a lot. And I might try and see whether it's back there, actually. See whether any of my original songs are on it. Uh, sure, let's go straight into manager mode. Hall manager? Player manager. Hall manager, obviously. I want to do everything. Let's manage England. Let's manage Arsenal. I know one of my friends supported Arsenal, so... Jack, this is for you. I uh, don't know what's going on here. Training, transfers, tactics. Link challenge, continue, squad. I guess start with training. Oh my god, this is really in-depth, actually. Train for fitness, schedule, do training. Train for position. Let's get them fit first. Um, are they training? Is it just telling me what they've done? I have no idea what I'm doing here. Right? Um, am I doing anything? Oh, okay. Low, moderate, high, extreme. Yeah, seems like there's a lot to work out in this one. Hey, Diablo Head, how are you doing? At GBA, you picked up F Zero, Circle of the Moon, and Pokemon Gold. That is a fantastic set of games for the launch. So it looks like I can't do the training now. Let's try. I don't want to do transfers. They haven't even had a match yet. Let's try tactics. Formation. Anyone who knows football, what's a good formation? Let's see what would make sense to me. It was good that the Game Boy Advance could, um... I don't even know what this means. Wing play, sure, why not? Strong. Who's gonna take the corners? Greg's. Okay. Can we do a, do a game? Let's try it some stats. There won't be any stats yet, they haven't played anything. Look at that empty list. I'm glad I'm not the only one who doesn't know anything about football. Fixtures? Is that who plays against who? We have to wait until the 18th of August 2001 for that match. There are no results. National Cup, League Cup, Euro Cup. Oh no, we even have to look at the finances. Oh my god. Are you enjoying this beat as well? Like, two loops over and over. What are we doing? Making the court? Improving the stadium? Let's rebuild this stadium from the ground up. Spend 2.1 million on it, sure. Oh my god, this is so in depth. Have I done everything? Have I set the squad up? Yeah, I did that. Continue. Now what's going to happen? Okay, now we're going to have an have an actual match. A home match. Let's do some tactics first. What do we want for this one? What's a good formation? Let's go 5-4-1, counting down. <laughs> and I'm bankrupt. They haven't even had one game yet. Let's go attacking plus, because we want lots of goals, don't we? And we want a, a direct method. And a dangerous aggression. And, yeah, sure, those people are great. Let's go. Okay, we're having... Oh, you can't actually see it. You just get to watch stuff. Okay, that's weird. They're just floating t-shirts. Oh no, someone got injured. He was being he was being too aggressive. What do we do now? Oh, do I have to choose someone to take his place? I have to choose three subs? I'm not sure what I did then. Am I doing okay? No shots yet. Oh, the crowd's upset about something. I think I'm taking some goals. It's so weird that you can't actually see anything. We need to change tactics. Let's try long ball. Maybe we can get a few shots in that way. 
Come on, we can do it. Go yellow. Go red t-shirt. Where was I seeing yellow? I don't know what I'm waiting for. The number's counting up in the corner, not down. Quick. Okay, there's an option to speed it up. We're in half time. Let's jump straight in. Have we actually scored anything? No. Yeah! Oh, that wasn't us. Boo! I think we lost. Okay, that's enough of that one. What should we try out next? I wanted to see what this one was like. This was one that I've been eyeing up. Top Gear GT. Another racing game. Another racing launch title. And I'll see whether I can find pocket music as well. It might be there. There's Castlevania. It, it wasn't called Circle of the Moon here. It was... Uh, why doesn't it focus up close anymore? It was literally just called Castlevania. Which is kind of interesting. There it is. We can see whether there's actually any songs on there. That will be really cool if there is. I used to love playing that. Alright, let's check out. Top Gear GT Championship! Let's go straight in for a championship match. I'm interested to see how this one plays because it looked like it was more of a sim style racer. Come on, we get a nice set of cars to start off with. Yeah, let's start off with the Subaru. Automatic. I always wimp out. I always think I'm going to do manual. No, I can't. I've been doing manual with Gran Turismo 7, though. And I'm pretty, pretty happy with how that's going. I've been playing it in VR on PSVR 2. Was there a GBA game with an intro as good as Cannon Fodder? Hey, new, new follower, thank you. George123 Esp. Uh, do we need to do qualifying lap first? I'm guessing so. You know, it does look like more of a simulation style game, which is pretty cool. Gear ratio, steering. I'll just leave everything on default because I don't know how they handle yet. But let's try and go straight in for a qualifier. Um, as far as I know... Oh, wow, this is weird. I wonder what the corners will be like. Hi! Oh, that's, uh, that's going off the bottom of the screen a little bit. Try that again. Oh, hold on. I can try it. I've got unlimited... I have the power to do unlimited Kirby's. That's better. Yay! Hi! It's not bursting my eardrums this time, either. It used to be way too loud. Whoa! Okay, that, wow, this is weird. It's kind of like half a on-rails racing game, but at the same time, it's also like a Mode 7 style racer. And it has actual elevation in the floor as well. How, how strange. This is weird. Hello, how's things in Spain? I'm sure it's a, a lot warmer than it is here in the UK. Yeah, this game's weird. I thought it would be like Konami Crazy Racer style, but it feels like more like something like Outrun, but a bit more methodical. I wonder if there's like a, a handbrake or anything. I mean, it doesn't really seem bad, but it's a bit... Maybe underwhelming. Like, the Game Boy Color could kind of do this at a push, just at a much lower resolution. Yeah, some parts of the UK had snow earlier. Not here, though. We just had clouds. Unless it's snowing right now. But yeah, it was, it was supposed to be snowing or hailing tomorrow as well, so maybe we'll get some. But... 
Luckily, I don't have to commute anymore. I am sat in my office right now, so I don't need to go anywhere. Yeah, I think this is built off the base of Top Gear Rally. This is Top Gear GT, so I guess it's kind of a spin-off in a way. And Top Gear Rally, that was on the Game Boy Color, wasn't it? I remember that being quite impressive. The weird thing that I've got with this is the texture on the floor doesn't seem to be moving and updating at the same time as the rest of the screen, which is a bit strange. And it does feel quite heavy to steer as well. It was released on the GBA. I wonder how I did them. Interesting, I haven't seen Top Gear Rally for the GBA. Let's, uh... Let's have a look. Maybe that's one I should try and track down. Oh yeah, it is on GBA. Is it on both? Top Gear Pocket was on the Game Boy Color. Top Gear Rally looks a lot nicer, actually. From what I can see on on Google right now. I'm guessing that was built on this one. Anyway, let's try a full race now that we did the intro. Now we actually have some opponents on the track. There's no background music, I just realised. Which is a bit weird. Definitely not showing off the GBA's sound chip for this game. I mean, if I got this as a launch title, I might have been a little bit disappointed, because it is very simple. But maybe it gets more interesting. It did look like there was stuff to unlock, and there's like a whole car customization component to it as well, which is cool. But in terms of the gameplay, this one feels a little bit lacking, especially compared to Konami Crazy Races. I feel like that was much more impressive than this one. Yeah, the, uh, the sound isn't great on this. The GBA and the GBC games are completely different. Interesting. They look kind of similar, but I guess they're just working off the same license. The N64 ones are meant to be pretty good as well. I would like to try and track them down at some point. And I have Top Gear for the SNES as well, and that's really good. That one's got an amazing soundtrack, so I think if you were coming from the SNES game, you would have been very disappointed in this one. For not having any music at all. Which one do you love? Whoa, it's a bit slippery. I'm in second. I'm not going to catch up in first place. Doesn't seem like L or R does anything at all, so it's literally just accelerate and brake. I guess they would be for the gears if you chose to do it in manual. I might download Top Gear Rally and give that one a go then. Let's see how it compares. I might already have it on here anyway, let's have a look after this. One of the best racing games for the GBA. That's high praise. I got one fairly recently called Gadget Races, which is pretty good. Sounds like Top Gear Rally is his childhood, not this one. I'll check it out in a minute. We can see whether it lives up to your memories or not. And see whether it's any better than this one. This is very basic. But I mean, still cool for a launch title. It kind of feels like a 3D game, so it's got that going for it. And you know, maybe it's more impressive seeing it running on the Game Boy rather than blowing up in 720p on a computer monitor. It's not quite the same experience, is it, really? Oh my god, there's really nothing happening. Where's the other opponents? There he is! We're going in on him. Oh, almost had a nice drift around the corner there. Come on, can we get past him? No! I went in the mud and it slowed me right down. We have one more lap to go. I'll catch him up on the next one. Come on, the acceleration's really slow on this one. 
Oh, there are some other really good rally games for the GBA as well. V Rally is incredibly impressive for the system. And Sega Rally is a pretty good port as well, although the resolution is not great on that one. But yeah, there are some really good racing games for the system, surprisingly. But V Rally 3 in particular is just such an impressive game. It even has a cockpit view, which is just completely unexpected for the Game Boy. And it genuinely looks like a PS1 game at times. Like, if you squint as you're playing it, you could pass it for a PS1 game. Yeah, we did it! We're in first! I think we've got about half a lap to go. Oh no, that was the second lap. Did a lot better than the first one. Oh my god, look at me actually using my brakes. I'm getting the hang of how this controls now. Maybe I should get V-Rally 3 out and show you what that's like. It's so impressive. I need to clone myself so I can get V-Rally 3 and, and play that while I'm downloading Top Gear Rally so you guys don't have to wait around. But I hope you're enjoying the stream anyway. I'm going to try and stream once a week, so if you are enjoying this, definitely give me a follow and join in again next Tuesday as well. Where maybe we'll be playing Sonic 06 because I kind of agreed to that after I got 300 followers. So we'll see. Played the PSV, PS2 version of what? V Rally 3. I've got it on the GameCube, I think, and yeah, it's really good. And another one as well called Rally Championship, which me and my dad used to play a lot. And we had that on PC as well Rally Championship. And then Rally Championship X Miles add on, which was really cool too. And then more later on, I got into the Dirt series, they're really fun. Dirt Rally. Especially in VR and PSVR. That was pretty mind-blowing at the time. So I hope they do another Dirt game for VR. I would love that on PS5. If they did a new Dirt Rally 3 or Dirt 6 or whatever. Gave it VR support, that'd be cool. Wah. V Rally was huge for a while. I wonder what happened to it. They don't make them anymore. Did it turn into that WRC Rally series? It might have. I saw a fan was actually remaking Sega Rally in Unreal 5 and it looks crazy impressive. So I would love to try that out at some point. Yeah, we did it first. Right, now I'm going to go on the laptop for a second. download Top Gear Rally for the GBA so again bear with me for a second and I'll put it on the SD card and don't tell Nintendo again isn't there some weird rule where you can download a ROM as long as you only use it for 24 hours or something okay downloading Top Gear Rally Which apparently came out in... Oh, it did say it, then it disappeared off the screen. 2002, I think I saw, so the year after. Uh, where shall I put it? I'll put it in other. Oh, As it's not a launch game, I shouldn't mess up the folder that I've created. TG Rally, okay, it's there. Let's give that a go. You'd like to see V Rally as well. Sure. Let's check that one out first, actually, because it should be in there somewhere. There's my original copy of Pinot B, which is what we were playing earlier. And there's another racing game, which is pretty good for the GBA Cruising Velocity. Right, I found V-Rally, so let's give that a shot and I can show you how crazy impressive it is. And uh, I'm actually going to stand up because my neck is aching, so... Push it out of the way. 
Uh, I've been sat in this chair all day. Well, technically I did go for a swim before I started this stream, but uh, I'm just a bit tired. But I really enjoy doing these streams, so I want to try and do them regularly. All right, let's try V-Rally 3. Using the official cartridge, not the ROM, so you can tell Nintendo about this one. I wonder what Nintendo thinks about the analog pocket. Are they okay with people, like, making consoles like that? I'm guessing that after, after a certain amount of time it's okay to do. Okay. Right, everyone, everyone watching, are you ready to have your mind blown by this game? And remember, this is running on the Game Boy Advance. You're going to be impressed. Sure, let's sign a contract with Renault Sports Team. Very windy, very winding rally in the snowy forest. I think it's a bit loud. Beware of changes in the road surface. Okay. That's what rally is, basically, right? I'll leave everything as it is. Let's just jump straight in. Okay. Three, two, there you go. Here's the inside go. inside the car view. Look at this. This is insane. And it actually feels really, really good to play as well. Like, the physics is spot on. Look at this, it's proper 3D as well, with like, textured polygons and everything, and a stable frame rate. Pretty crazy, and that, that's what it looks like outside. Outside it's not quite as impressive, because the car is obviously, you know, just a, a sprite. But from this point of view, it just looks insane. Yeah, oh my god, yeah, compare this to GT, Top Gear GT that we just played. This is almost like it's in a completely different generation. It's incredible. Again, no background music. I'm guessing because they put all of the effort into the CPU to draw all these polygons, but yeah. Just incredible. I don't know who, what team made this or anything, but there's not really anything else for the GBA that I can think of that looks this good. Maybe X versus Sever 2, but FPS game. But yeah, honestly, this like rivals Sega Rally. So impressive. And I know, obviously, you can't feel it, but the controls and the physics genuinely feel like a proper console experience. Like the way we're sliding around the corner then, tapping the accelerator. Having to brake to go around sharper and stuff. So impressive. And even the way the map rotates in the corner looks a lot nicer than the Top Gear game did. Just crazy what they could pull off. They've even got people standing on the side of the track. And the physics actually change depending on whether the car's damaged or not too. Yeah, you'd remember X vs Sever. It's kind of like... Um, a James Bond style spy action FPS game. Kind of modelled on the GoldenEye sort of era. Maybe more like Perfect Dark, I guess. But yeah, it's a really good first person shooter actually. There was a few others as well. There was one called Backtrack, which was pretty cool for a very early release. But yeah. Um, let's try. Yeah, it did. It had all sorts of things, like you could unlock different cars, you can tweak all their settings, like the Top Gear one and stuff. It's a proper fully-fledged game. Um, what was I going to do? Oh yeah, let's go and see what that other Top Gear game was like. TG Rally. You have two copies of Backtrack. Was that for the multiplayer? It was pretty good. It's kind of like a really simple Doom clone, but... It was impressive for the time. It's a bit basic though. Right, let's see what this one's like. Tantalus. I can't remember who made the last ones. 
It's got funky music. Let's see whether the actual game has music. Oh, do I need to actually type something in? Already the menu looks nicer. I like that 3D thing that's going around it. Let's try the championship then. Amateur League. Eleven points required, okay. So I'm guessing this won't be... Oh wow, it actually, it's actually really smooth. Hey, wait for me. Okay, wow, the trees are very blocky. This one actually reminds me a lot more of... Oh, that's weird, the trees are moving faster than the background. This reminds me of the Sega Rally game. This is really interesting, so... It's kind of a mix of 3D and 2D. The difference here being... Oh my god, yeah, the way the background moves is really weird. So the car's completely 3D in this one, compared to the fact that the car was just a sprite in V-Rally. But the floor itself is completely flat. The floor itself is Mode 7. Oh, maybe not. That's interesting. It looked like it was Mode 7 rotations. It's really smooth then, if that's actual polygons. I feel like the way the trees are scaling, though, is the weirdest thing about this. And the fence doesn't have any perspective to it. Let's see. Ah, uh, not... It kind of goes first person, but not like V-Rally. You just get a bumper cam. Oh my god, that tree scaling is so weird. It's still really impressive, though. Very cool. Yeah, it's a bit more slippery than V-Rally was. As you can see, I'm kind of floating about. I can't really judge how soon it's going to take the corner. Maybe you'd get used to it. Um, actually, no, I don't think the previous game had voices. So that's something that this one's got over that one. I need to get off the grass. Yeah, the controls on this one are nowhere near as good, though. Easy right. I've heard that so much. My dad used to play rally games all the time. There we go. I'll show you Sega Rally as well. Let's see whether I can find that one. So, I don't know how we got onto this topic, but let's try comparing racing games. Let's try Sega Rally. See how it compares to V-Rally and Top Gear Rally. There we go. Sega Rally Championship. As far as I remember, this one probably has the worst graphics out of the three. Made by Sega Rosso. You know what else they made? Cosmic Smash, which is getting a remake next month. For PSVR 2, which is really cool. I'm very much looking forward to that. Hey, Quang's just joined. Hello. It was supposed to be a stream about Game Boy Advance launch titles, but we've got a little bit off track. And I'm waiting for my controller to connect to the dock. How are you doing, Quang? How's everything? So we just played a little bit of V Rally 3. And. My controller doesn't want to connect. Let's try pairing it again. And now we're going to have a quick look at Sega Rally as well. I need to re reconnect the controller. Just got some funky music. There we go, we're connected. I seem to be having some weird issues with the analog pocket dock and connecting the controller. I'm not sure whether it's because it thinks it's an FC30 when it's actually the SF. SF30 instead of FC, but I don't know whether that would make a difference or not. Anyway, let's have a look at Sega Rally. Yeah, I've been trying to track down Asterix and Obelix. 
um, um, like, so I did say it right. I always get that wrong. Yeah, so impressive. We were just saying that it basically looks like a PS1 title. And yeah, Sega Rally, as I was saying, the resolution on this is awful. DJ Mike 81, thank you for the follow. The resolution's awful, but the game actually controls really well. I think it controls a lot better than that Top Gear Rally game we were just playing. Although maybe it's a little bit sticky. Like it doesn't really feel like you're um, drifting much. But this one does have background music, which the other ones didn't. So that's an improvement. Good music too, actually. So Quang, what is your experience with the GBA? Did you get it on launch day? We were talking about our launch day games. Someone had Konami Crazy Racers day one, which I'm a little bit jealous of because that game's really fun. But my launch titles were Rayman Advance and Pin OB Wings of Adventure. And I did enjoy both of them. We were just playing a little bit of Pin OB as well. I was saying how I really wanted to try and track down the PS1 version. Uh, sorry, Reanimator, I missed your comment there. Do you keep your old save files? Decided to replay Mario Land 3. I like to keep my old save files. But what I do is, if I want to start a game again, I just look for the save file that has the least amount of time on it. And just go over that one. Yeah, this is probably the least impressive out of the three. But it's still pretty cool, especially if you scale it down onto the GBA screen. Obviously, it looks like this is just a mess of pixels, but that's because we're playing it, you know, in HD. Anyway, I was only just doing a quick little demo of that so I could show you what it was like. And now we can actually get back onto the topic of the video, which was somewhere. Launch games. So what launch games will we check out next? We tried Soccer Manager and that one just didn't make any sense whatsoever. Um... You feel like it's nostalgic when you play save games from previous owners. Yeah, I can't remember what I got recently, but it had a save file and it had like 80 hours on it. It was like, oh, someone really must have loved this game. Let's have a look at Rayman. That was another game that I got day one. And I'd never played it on PS1. This was actually my first experience with the Rayman series. And I was really, really impressed. Obviously, I'd been reading about it a lot in magazines before it came out. What? How have you never told me you started making a Game Boy Advance game? What is this? You played as a ninja raccoon with a boomerang that had to collect underwear. <laughs> I take it um, publishers weren't very interested in that concept? That sounds pretty interesting. How far did it get? Was there a prototype? Wow, actually, this looks kind of kind of compressed. Oh, you, you were making it yourself then. That's cool. Look how nice these graphics are. They're a little bit zoomed in compared to the PS1, obviously, to fit on the GBA's screen. But it definitely, it definitely works, and the way the camera moves You've still got a really good view of what's going on. I just loved all the little details back in the day. Like, look at the little mushrooms bouncing up and down. It looks so good. And the flower dancing there. And we go, yeah! It was a beaver, not a raccoon. Didn't get any far. Just a sprite. Jump in and throw around the boomerang. Sounds cool, though. Have you still got the files for it? I know you have a lot of stuff in your archives. Oh yeah, about Rayman Advance. See that tiny little sparkling thing there? When I noticed them, I thought I'd like hacked the game. It's like, oh my god, if I don't touch them, that means the enemies don't spawn. And that's probably how the programmers spawn the enemies, is by having bits in the environment like that. So You can see that when you press that, you might not have been able to see it on the stream. And it was especially difficult to see on the GBA screen back in the day. 
but just after this I got a game called Rayman Gold on the PC and it let you make your own levels. So I kind of understood how that worked after that. But yeah, this this whole game was just crazy impressive to see on the Game Boy Advance back in 2001. Coming from the Game Boy Color to this, this is like, this is a true generational leap, isn't it? Obviously there was a Rayman game on the GBA, but it, on the Game Boy Color, but it didn't look anything like this. Yes, GBA is the golden age of handhelds. Even though, technically, it only lasted three years, which is crazy compared to the original Game Boy. I go into that in a bit more detail um, in Friday's video. Possibly Friday's video. Yeah, DMG and Game Boy Color definitely had a lot more going for it, but I think in terms of what the games could be, I think the GBA is better. I think? What would you guys think? What would you guys say? Everyone who's watching, do you prefer the Game Boy and Game Boy Color? Or do you prefer the Game Boy Advance? Just as a concept. It, I always find it really, really weird that the Game Boy Advance only lasted three years until the DS came out. Let's get that golden fist. Hey Starlock, how are you doing this evening? Good to see you again. What was your experience with the GBA Starlack? Did you get it on launch? Did you get it after the fact? I've been trying to find out how everyone got their starts with, with the GBA. Your first handheld was the Advance. Awesome. Okay, taking backwards compatibility out of the equation. As a system on its own, do you prefer the GBA or the Game Boy Color? Look, there's some more of them sparkling things. Let's see what happens. It triggers the old men who throw mops at you for some reason. You got the GBA towards the end of the cycle. Interesting. What style of GBA did you get then? If it was towards the end, was it the SP? And the next question, did anyone bother getting the Game Boy Micro? Or did you think it was a bit pointless, considering the DS had already come out? I'm too much of a sucker for Nintendo stuff, so I got the Micro the day it came out as well, even though I already had a DS. And I didn't really use it much. I have two Micros right here. I have the, the regular one, which is my original one. With a little Luma on the back, and then I have the Famicom 25th anniversary one as well. Which I got in Japan. In Akihabara. You didn't get the micro and you regret it. Yeah, you should get the micro, it looks... The screen is so good. Seriously, look how nice that is. And... If you want to see what V-Rally looks like on a GBA, I'll just put it in here, so let's boot it up. Your GBA SP is actually from your big sister, but you played it more than her. My sister wasn't interested in games at all. She had a, a pink DS and she played a little bit of Animal Crossing and Nintendogs. But she wasn't really interested. Imagine playing Golden Sun on the micro. Anyway, I'll put it on full screen for a second because you've got to see how this looks. Uh, I will not be able to play it in in reverse, but look at that. That's literally like playing a PS1 game. It looks so good. And if you press select, look at that. That's insanely good quality for the time. And I cannot play in reverse. Let's go back on full screen. Yeah. The micro screen's just amazing. And obviously the SP101 was really good too. <clears throat> Never had any interest in the micro. 
It was a weird system. It was a really weird idea. And I was watching a video the other day and it kind of makes sense where Nintendo was going for it. I think, and so did the person who made this video, I can't remember who it was, sorry, but... They basically said it was Nintendo's take on something like the iPod Nano, which also came out around the same time. And obviously that did incredibly well for Apple, but obviously Apple is a bit more of a... Um, what's the word? Like a fashion statement? A fashion, fashionable brand? Whereas Nintendo isn't really, so... I think they were trying to go after that kind of market, and that kind of market wasn't really interested in, you know, buying a Game Boy. You had good lights for playing the original Game Boy. Oh no! I missed that. So, we're going to fight him now, and then we're going to fly on his back through a cool little uh, horizontal scrolling shoot 'em up section, which I always really loved. This music reminds me a little bit of Donkey Kong Country. And then he starts going really fast if you if you actually give him a chance to attack. Wow. You didn't know the SP existed. Wow. I love the SP, but yeah, the original the original is so much nicer to hold. There's Oh no. Pause. There's my original There's my original SP with a bunch of stickers that came in a magazine at some point. Still works, still charges. That is my day one Game Boy SP. Unfortunately, I don't have my day one Game Boy Advance anymore. I I, I don't think I traded it in for the SP, because I remember the SP came out just after my birthday. Or, yeah, it came out just after my birthday in 2003, and for my birthday, I got an IOU, and it said, IOU, one Game Boy Advance SP on whatever day in March that it came out, so... I always think it's actually fun. Oh, that's brilliant, Kong. I was trying to ask people earlier if they'd had any experience with the Afterburner kit. How did it compare to the um, IPS displays that you can get these days? Or what was it? Was it a light that went over the screen that was already in the Advance, or was it actually a replacement screen? Because I'd never actually seen one in person, so I was really curious as to how that worked. Because I know that magazines back in the day were saying you need to get an afterburner kit if you want to be able to play Castlevania. And I wasn't really old enough to understand how to get one or what to do with it if I did get one. Back then, so I never, I never had the chance. I did have an IPS screen Game Boy Advance, but for some reason the screen just won't turn on anymore. Which is a shame, but... It's not like I haven't got a hundred other ways of playing GBA games already. Yeah, definitely install a backlight in your SP if you can. I'll show you I'll show you the difference. Here's my here's my original SP with its regular front light. And then <laughs> this is this is insane. And then here's the one that I modded the screen into. Look at the difference. Obviously, it's a little bit too bright for the camera, but yeah. You can see what a massive difference having an IPS screen in it makes. Or a 101 if you're lucky enough to get the 101. Uh, Krong said, it looks terrible. It's basically a light strip at the bottom that was reflected through a clear sheet of plastic that went over the screen. Oh, so it wasn't actually a backlight at all. Yeah, that's what put me off. Apparently, you needed to be able to solder something. And, you know, at, what, 12 years old, I was not confident in doing anything like that. I'm planning to install a backlight into one of the SPs. I saw recently that there's a new kit you can do where you can actually take the light from a DSi. You can take the screen from a DSi and use that, which is really cool. I guess at least the front light, you know, gave you the option. All right, what else shall we try? Let's try Mario Advance. I think this would probably be the launch title that most people are familiar with. I always found it kind of weird that it was Mario 2. I love this though. They were really showing off the fact that it's in widescreen. 
Come on, out of those dark borders. It's pretty interesting. I've never seen a game do this. The last time I saw people do this kind of thing with widescreen was when YouTube finally went widescreen. Whoa! So much more space! Oh yeah. The thing about this game, they filmed it with voice samples. Because they were showing off. Oh, I've never noticed that before. There's a little weird glitch. Just to the left of the screen. Yeah, screen crunch. Kind of. I don't know what you would say about this game. Is it crunched compared to the SNES? Oh my god, I forgot there's sounds for literally everything. I think even if you do the eye jump. Yeah. Yeah! The sounds for everything. That's something new as well. Another thing they showed off a lot was the sprite scaling that the um, the Game Boy Color. I don't even think the SNES had sprite scaling like that either, so that's pretty cool. And that, of course, they just randomly scaled up any sprites they felt like. Astro Boy's the worst for that. Get out of here, where's the door? Yeah, SNES had background scaling, but not sprite scaling. I think they kind of did with the Super FX chip. Because, from what I remember anyway, in Yoshi's Island, the, the bosses scale in that, don't they? But I guess built into the hardware, no it didn't. So they really wanted to show that off on this. Uh, oh no! FX2 chip. I'm not used to playing as Mario, I always play as Luigi. What did you guys and girls think of Mario 2? Did you ever play Mario 1 before it? Were you confused why it was so different? Oh my god, they're really showing off the scale and stuff. Even all the points and things just fly around. Let's see whether I can make the waterfall this time, that's better. Oh my god, another giant sprite! Oh my god, he doesn't shut up, does he? You were confused with Mario 2. Let's see if we can still do the skip. Ah, uh, not quite. Can you do it from there? Not quite. Come here. Oh no! Never mind. That's another one. Watch this, we can skip out the start of the level. Whee! Oh no! Oh yeah, that's new as well. I'm looking for a heart. I don't think I've ever played Mario 2 so badly before, oh my god. Why is it different? I mean, why is Mario 2 different? Does someone want to tell them? I envy you getting this far in life and not having heard the story of Doki Doki Panic a million times. <laughs> yeah, I didn't want to say it, Quang. Did you know Mario 2 was actually Doki Doki Panic? For the Famicom? Someone still doesn't. I need to make that video, that's how my channel's really gonna go viral. That's all I need to do. Uh. I would love to try and get Doki Doki Panic at some point, but I feel like if I actually made a video on that, it might feel a bit cliche. Although maybe not, because I haven't really seen that many people actually have the... I don't know whether it was a cartridge or whether it was a disc system game. Ah. There's a little bit of a delay because I'm playing it through Streamlabs. So, the um, if I'm missing any of the jumps, that's why. Even Birdo talks. No! Dun, 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 dun. Oh yeah, I'll remember this! 
Now we get to do something that Nintendo banned in the future. Gambling! And I was really upset when they took it out of Pokemon. Dun, 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 dun. Yep. Mario 2 became the Lost Levels. Let's play as Luigi this time. Yeah, they're in the Game Boy Color one once you finish the game. You can play all of the Lost Level stages. If I remember correctly. In some ways, I feel like Mario Deluxe for the Game Boy Color was probably more interesting compared to the game, the uh, Mario Advance series. Oh, I missed going up there. Can I get up there with Luigi? Yeah, of course I can. Oh, God, he's so slow with jumping. There we go. We skipped out an annoying inside bit of the level where you have to throw bombs everywhere. There's probably a door somewhere there. I should have tried to go through a door and pick up another mushroom. But for whatever reason, I forgot to go through there. Hey, Karnas here. Hey, how's it going? Have you been working on the game? Ah! Me and Karna are programming a Metroidvania game together. For a game jam. Ah! Oh my god, Luigi's jumped so slow. I want that heart! Let me have it. There we go. That sprite is so weird. When he flies forward. Right, one more hit. Yeah, the, the Game Jam deadline's next week. Just for PC at the minute. Uh, I was trying to look at the chat then. Birdo nearly killed me. There we go. Back at it tomorrow. Yeah, I'll try and do a bit of programming tomorrow, but it might have to wait until the weekend because I've got a video that I'm working on for the GBA. Dun, 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 dun. I was programming some um, combat system the other day, trying to get it. Let's play as Toad. Why does he look like an old man there? There's some weird shading going on around his face. <clears throat> I know. I feel like I need to contribute something to the game, though. Khan has been teaching me how to program properly in Unity, which is very much appreciated. There we go. We can get an extra life on this stage. Uh, programming in C Sharp in Unity. Been learning about how everything fits together because I've only really done separate scripts before. So, to like look at how delegates work and things like that, and sharing variables between scripts is pretty interesting, but also pretty confusing at the same time. Hey, DJR Dave, how you doing? Every time I see your name, I think I, I really need to play Mario Maker again. Is there nothing in that pipe? I'm sure that pipe was a warp. Maybe you have to do something else first. I have to take a key in there or something, if I remember right. <clears throat> I do enjoy programming, but it takes a lot for me to get my head around it. I used to absolutely hate programming. I actually did programming in first year of uni and dropped out because I just did not understand it. But since then, um, after I finished uni, I started making a game and learnt a bit through that. And then through my job, I had to do a bit of programming. And now these days I'm fairly comfortable with the concepts behind it and stuff. And I've been trying to do it more and more, so working on this Game Jam game has been a big help. You love programming, but there's... Oh, what was I supposed to do with that door? There's certain aspects you can't wrap your head around. What have you been struggling with? Maybe someone here in the chat will be able to help you out. Ow! Oh. Yeah, game jams are definitely a great way to learn. I'm actually going to be... Well, actually, I am helping set up the Game Boy Jam this year. So that'll be fun. I'm going to be one of the judges on it, too. Okay, are we ready to to be terrified of this mask that chases us? Ah! The nightmare mask. 
Yeah, shall I stream the game when we're done? Oh god, it killed me! There's my childhood trauma coming back to haunt me. Let's try playing as Princess Peach and you can see what she's like as well. You did 50 game jams after you returned to game development. That's crazy. Oh no, I shouldn't have gone down there. <laughs> Don't look, nothing happened. You saw nothing. Let's try that again. <laughs> wow, Quang, that is dedication. Is that where Mau Mau Castle came from? Was it, Did that start as a game jam? No, why is it there all the time? Now I'm going to die again. I remember really struggling with this game as a kid. Obviously I had it on the NES and the SNES as well and I could still never finish it. I think I did finish it on the GBA eventually. But it's definitely one of the more challenging Mario games. Why do I feel like there's a pit down the bottom? That's because there was. Okay, we got through the door anyway. Oh yeah, Peach, for those of you that don't know, she can do that hover ability. Why does that remind me of a Mega Man level? There should have been an E tank at the end of it or something. Yay. I always find it really weird that you go inside this weird bird head at the end. You beat this game for the first time recently. Wow. That's cool. Which version did you play? Did you play the GBA one? Mouser, my favourite Mario boss for some reason. As a kid I was obsessed with Mouser. I don't know why. <laughs> I just noticed something about this version. They got rid of the um, the flashing the screen filling flash effect. Ah! I had to put a warning on the uh, NES video that I made because the whole screen flashes like bright red and blue and... Yeah, not good if you've got epilepsy. That was one of the reasons that Nintendo dimmed the screen for the NES games as well on the, on the Wii U. Don't question it. Lego, giant rats. This isn't the first Mario game that has Lego as bricks, though. I, I think that award goes to Mario Mario Land 2. I don't know why I'm doing this, but sure, let's fill the hearts back up. Yeah. Mario Land 2, six golden coins. There was a whole section that was set inside Mario's body for some reason, and that was all made out of Lego. Or, I guess technically it was made out of NB blocks, which was Nintendo's versions of Lego from back in the 50s and 60s. Yeah, there you go. Cranks. Crank knows. I've got the box somewhere. I'll, sh I'll show you guys. Hold on. I'll show you guys. Let's go back on full screen for a sec. And you get to listen to the cool Mario 2 music in the background. I got this recently. The Four Mario. And it, it was originally a French book, but now it's translated into English as well. And it's got literally... Let's see if I can find something interesting in here. Every, like, every game that Nintendo has made, but, like, really, really high quality, like, photos of everything. It's so interesting to look through. And even, like, all their different old logos and stuff. I'll see whether NB blocks in here. You can see what they look like. NB block page 18. Or number 18. There's some. How about a Nintendo Lego spaceship? There you go. So it is basically just Lego. Like, the bricks look identical. Uh, I can't really see the screen from here, but there you go. There was a few different kits like that. Um, What's the first thing in here? This is more to do with the actual toys and stuff, so... 
The first thing is a family game, which looks like some sort of baseball simulator, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I've got a whole separate book just about the Hanafuda cards. And I would love to get some. I've actually been looking on... It's so crazy, all the amount of the amount of different random games that Nintendo made before they made video games. Like That one is a football game where you actually use this air pump to hit the ball towards the goal. So cool. There's just so many random things. I would love to try and get one of these one day. There's like a traditional style board game about a samurai. Crazy. And... Here's the other book. This one covers all of the Hanafuda stuff. I'll, sh I'll briefly show you this. I need another camera on this side of the screen so I can show you properly. There you go. There's some of their history with the playing cards. Going all the way back to the 1800s. So many different designs and stuff. Like There's some traditional ones. If you can see that without the glare on the screen. And then a bit later on, they moved into doing Disney-style ones. But look how cool that looks like. Look at the really old packaging for them as well. Let's see if they've got the Disney ones in here. And there was like some based on Japanese cartoons and stuff. Promo cards for baseball teams. There's Oh, I better censor that one. There's a naked lady on that side. There's some of the Popeye ones that they did. Obviously, Nintendo Nintendo and Popeye have a pretty long history. There's some Disney ones. Yeah, they were one of the best card manufacturers in Japan at the time. They had really high quality systems and stuff. Yeah, all sorts of random stuff. That is something I would love to get. That was Gunpei Yokoi's first invention. So the, the creator of the Game Boy actually started out with this weird extending hand contraption in 1967. And that was their first ever electronic game, which is something that I'm going to do a video on at some point. It's called the Rabbit Coaster. And basically, yeah, love hotels, taxis, Instant noodles. So much random stuff. I could literally spend hours talking about that. There's some more of the N and B N and B block stuff. Some old TV adverts. Yeah, there was a. Anyway, let's get back to the GBA. There was um, a mini game in WarioWare that goes into some of the history. And then um, there was another thing in WarioWare as well, which looked at the weird vacuum cleaner that could only turn left. Which was uh, another one of Gunpei's weird inventions from the time. Let's see. What haven't we played? Castlevania, sure. We've been talking about Castlevania a bit today. But yeah. In terms of Nintendo's history, I've actually been writing a huge like video series that I want to do at some point. That goes through every year of their history, basically. like using all these books as reference and stuff but that's for that's for the future I wrote quite a lot of it over Christmas let's try some Castlevania elsewhere in the world it's actually known as Castlevania Circle of the Moon but here I've got a really interesting story to go along with this as well so here it was just called Castlevania and Bear with me one second, I want to show you something. You can watch this intro while I'm gone. Yes. Visiton um, Dockable Entertainment is actually going to be in Friday's video. Not an official one. But did you know there was actually a second version, which came out in 2008, which was a head-mounted version that went in the back of the car seat. And I actually found out the other day that that was the final ever revision of the Game Boy that was officially released. Yeah. Bear with me a second, anyway. I've got something to show you guys. Uh, maybe. If I can find it.
Okay. This is a this is a good story and something that I was very excited about back in the day. So the reason that I got this Castlevania game was completely by accident. I actually from game for four pound ninety eight on sale bought NES Classics Castlevania and they put this in the box, thinking it was the same game. So yeah, that's that's how that that's how that came about. So that that was a very, very nice surprise. You need some wireless headphones. They are wireless. I just don't like using headphones with batteries. So I never use the wires. If I'm coming to the London Gaming Market, you'll bring it along. Oh, fantastic. Yes, I'm going to be there. Would you mind if I brought it back to do a video on and I could give it back to you at some point? I was actually thinking of splitting next week's video in two and then talking about the different variations of the GBA and the one after. But yeah. Get in Castlevania for £4.98 on sale was a very nice surprise. Oh, thank you so much, Quang. That's, that's awesome. That'll make the video a lot better as well. That will be the ultimate birthday present for me this year. I love the fact that London Gaming Market always falls on my birthday. I feel like I can treat myself and not feel guilty about spending so much money then. This, th yeah, I'm not really bothered about the story in this Castlevania game. And Igarashi himself actually completely wrote this game out of the canon because he didn't like it at all which is really really funny whoa i've been playing uh aria of sorrow recently and going back to this one this is kind of jarring so instead of the souls in this one you get different cards and i can't remember how you actually no effect What's the point of having it if it doesn't do anything? Weird. You can examine it here. A lizard bathed in flames, embodiment of the fire pit salamander. It has the power of fire, but it doesn't do anything. But yeah, going back to this after playing Aria of Sorrow is pretty jarring. The way the camera like flies up as soon as you jump is pretty weird. The sprites are really small as well. Quite unusual for the GBA because they usually have really big sprites. It looks alright though. I remember at the time people were saying that the graphics were really bad and not that much of an improvement over the Game Boy Color. But it kind of is. Although, have you seen... Actually, is... Um, is Diablo Head still in the chat? Weren't you working on a uh, Game Boy version of this game? For the original Game Boy? Love the pirates. That the pallets boosted. Apparently this one was still almost impossible to see on the original GBA screen. And they completely overcompensated with the next one. Can't go that way yet. Hey, you're still here. And you made an example project. Yeah, I remembered I remembered seeing it on Twitter. I thought it was really cool. How did you get the sprites to look so close to the GBA game? Did you did you have to reduce the um, colour palette or anything to get it to work? Yeah, I don't know whether you know or not, Quang, but when I was doing a bit of research into this as one of the launch games, apparently Konami couldn't see what the game was going to look like on the GBA. But I'm not sure whether I believe that, because all of the dev kits that I've seen had GBA screens on them. At least the original ones, which I presume is what Konami would have had back in the day. Because there was a second revision um, by Intelligent Systems that didn't have a screen. And that one just plugged straight into the computer. But I was trying to work out the timings, and I don't think that version would have existed when Konami was building this. The sprites were just ripped and put straight on the Game Boy Color. 
they had GPAs attached to controllers only. So were they using the intelligent systems version of the board? I'm gonna I'm gonna share my screen and show you my script because you might be able to help. Uh, bear with me one second. If I was on my Mac, I could just show you straight away, but I've got to log into iCloud to show my notes on uh, on this PC. Uh, here. Yeah, so I've been looking into the dev kits and stuff. No, it'll, it'll be interesting. Maybe maybe someone else here can can have a look as well if I can get it up. It's pretty messy at the minute. But if we... There we go. If we scroll down here, here's a little sneak peek as to what's to come. So there's... It kept correcting me, but there's a visit on... Dockable Entertainment 2006, and then the head-mounted version on 2008 as well. But anyway, this is what I'm going through. So I'm starting with the Project Atlantis and talking about how that worked. And I haven't quite finished it yet. I'm going to split that up into two videos. So maybe I'll wait a little bit and then I can talk about that in the video as well. But further down here... Oh, I found something else really cool the other day. There was a interview that Google did with the um, actual designer of the ARM architecture. Yes, in my mind. Yeah, they did an interview, a video interview with the ARM architecture person who worked there in the 90s. And he actually, for the first time ever, it was actually officially stated that they were working with Nintendo in 1994 on this, which until 2019 was never actually confirmed apart from this magazine article. And I don't think anyone's actually found that out because... It was just on this random interview that I found Did I remove the from three years ago. It's only got 17,000 views and it doesn't mention Nintendo anywhere. So that was really exciting. There's a few more magazine scans. So yeah, this is, this is the dev kit that I've seen. This was the original one. This is the IGN article from 2000. So a year before the system was released. And it has... It actually has an LCD LCD screen on the board itself. And this is what was sent out to developers before the system came out. So I'm not really sure how Konami wouldn't have seen the game on the system. Because there was, a, there was an interview as well with some of the Japanese developers. Oh god, look at them. They're hilarious. Yeah, the Intelligent Systems one... You'll see that in a second. This one. This one came out a bit later. Apparently this one came out in 2001. Which is when the GBA would have already been released. But before that, the first batch of developers were given this one here. Which has a screen inside it. So unless their screen was broken and they were just using a slot to plug it into the computer. I don't know. I was just trying to figure out like how would they have not been able to see it. And then there was that version where you could use a GBA as a controller. That's something else really interesting. That's the actual Game Boy Advance cartridge on that one. And then there was a claims special version as well that just used a parallel port, but you could write to the cartridges. I found so much really interesting stuff. Um, I know what you're thinking of. You're thinking of the Nitro, Nitro development kit. Um, but yeah, it was this. I don't know whether this is going to load properly because it was all in Japanese. Oh, it did translate. Yeah. There you go. There's them showing off the pre-release board and this interview was in 2000. So, yeah, all really interesting anyway. So that that is where I'm at with this video. It's going to be a long one. And... I don't think it'll really work on here. No, it's not showing everything. Never mind. Anyway, that was a sneak peek as to what's coming up and a bit of stuff that I found. Hopefully that was interesting. And I love the fact that it actually came with a tech demo of Yoshi's Story as well, which never got a release. And IGN was like confident that it would be a launch game because they were showing this off back in 2000.
So it's so weird that it never became anything. It looks really good too. Look at that. You can actually get the ROM. And that was the other thing that came with the original dev board, this rotating island. Which is pretty interesting too. In fact, I wonder whether I've put any any on here. Maybe not for the GBA. That's a shame. I should have put some on there. I think it'd be really cool if they actually did a full version of uh, Yoshi's story as well. Uh, let's just homebrew. I thought I had some prototypes, but it might be on one of the Everdrives. It could be on here, actually. I'll try putting that in there. This video has gone completely off topic, but never mind. It's all interesting stuff. Uh, I want to see whether I've got the Yoshi story demo on here. No. Sometimes that one doesn't work. Maybe. Let's see if it's on this. Uh, prototypes. I knew I had something on here. Blue Angelo. Why did that never come out? That game looks really cool. Yoshi Sample. Okay. Might be these. I knew I had them somewhere. Yes. Let's see. Oh, okay, cool. So, this is the island demo. That's literally all it is. It doesn't do anything. That's it. So this would have been on the dev kits and they could boot this up and see, you know, see this island spinning. Which is kind of a weird demo because from looking at it, I think this island is just pre-rendered. It doesn't look like it's an actual 3D model. I guess the 3D bit is the water and the textures on the floor underneath, which is pretty cool. And it must have been impressive for the time, because I was reading some of the IGN pre-release articles and they were going like, Oh my god, the graphics were insane. The graphics were insane, look at this 3D, but it's not really 3D, they kind of cheated. So... Oh, you can do something. Oh, it is the same the same demo. Here we go, here's the Yoshi story bit. Not much actually happens though. You can press L and it'll zoom in. I guess it was showing off the sprite scaling. Doesn't look like you can actually fire... You can't really fire the eggs either. So this was technically the first thing that was ever shown off for the GBA. Yeah, compared to the Game Boy Color, it was a massive step up. Kind of a weird tech demo, though. I guess because the game was new at the time. Yeah, then it just come out. Oh, you can run as well. Cool. But I feel like it could have been a fun game if they wanted it to. You still got his hover ability as well. So imagine this, but seeing it with no backlight. And on a PCB that was like five times the size of the Game Boy. And playing it with a SNES controller that plugged into one of the ports in the front. And that is what some people's first experience with the Game Boy Advance was. Back in 1999. Which I just find absolutely fascinating. <clears throat> yeah, I think a big selling point. The big selling point was the fact that you could play SNES games on, on the go. I wonder how far this goes. I've never actually played this much of the demo before. Weird, when you hit the floor they change colour. Does that happen in the N64 one? I think it's just looping. Well, maybe not. Yeah, it looks like it shouldn't exist, I guess. Because technically it doesn't. And it's weird seeing it so um, so clear as well, because 
you would have only seen really blurry screenshots back in the day. Huh, I just noticed it says Made in Japan in the background. Well, this is this is a tech demo that's based on Yoshi's story, which was the Yoshi's Island sequel that came out on the, on the N64. Made in Japan. Technically, it's the first level of Yoshi's story. You just can't do anything. I wonder if you can actually die. I'll try jumping down the pit. Okay, they did program it. I guess this is where that screenshot of the castle comes from. There we go. So it's kind of weird. It's like... The base of the game was there. So it is very strange that they didn't turn it into a full game. And then it goes back to that island. And there you go. That was, uh, that was a look at the tech demo. Which I think is really fascinating. And let's do one more game. Then I'm going to call it a night. Because I do want to actually try and write some of that script tonight as well. What shall we end with? Actually, let's try and end it with this one. Tweeting in the Magic Gems. I've never played this one before. But I was looking into it for a um, GBA puzzle games video that I was thinking about doing. So let's see what this one's like. I'm guessing it's kind of like a panel de pawn style. I'm not going to bother reading the story. Okay, how to play. Let's start with that. Something on the ground top to colours. On the N64 one as well. Okay. It has been a while since I played it. Oh, okay, it's not a puzzle game, it's a board game. Virtual board game, packed with arcade action. Move around the board, draw a card. Okay, let's just jump into a game. So it's like Mario Party. Was there a separate puzzle game that came out later then? Because I remember seeing something about a puzzle game. Kind of like Kirby Star Stacker or something. Let's do normal. Hopefully we can actually see what one of the minigames looks like at least. Find five magic gems scattered around the world. The map in the lower right shows shining gems. The gems indicate the cities where the gems are located. Travel to the cities and collect the gems. Okay. Let's draw a card. For some reason, instead of a dice, is that them trying to be unique? So I guess... Whoa, what's going on here? Did we go to the shop? Was it like a... a movie tie-in where they travel to different parts of the world or something? Let's choose an item. How much money have I got? Zero. I just want to get into one of the minigames and see what that's like. Now it's the CPU's turn. Kind of a weird game. This isn't what I was expecting. I'm glad I didn't get this one on launch, though. Travelling around the world. Cool. Oh no, I got a Joker. What does that mean? The devil's coming to get me. Hello! Uh, I'm not going to try and pronounce that username, but hello, thanks for joining the stream. Unfortunately, you came right at the end of the stream. I'm going to finish it after I've seen a little bit of this game. As I'm going to go and work on my vi video for Friday. But thanks for popping by anyway. Definitely give me a follow, because next time I'll be doing something more interesting. Well, you found me on YouTube. Awesome. I'm glad you like the channel. It's been doing really well recently as well, so it's great that more people are finding me, finally. I'm really not getting to do much in this game. I just wanted to see what one of the minigames was like. Maybe I should have chose mini games instead. Where are the mini games?
Yeah, this is this is boring. I'm gonna restart it and choose minigame instead. <clears throat> Uh, that intro, so iconic. They were even showing off in the intro, having the letters scale in like that. Okay, let's try minigames. Let's see if they're anything like Mario Party. We have to choose all of them. Yeah. Poor kid who got this as their launch game for the GBA. Although, I don't know, maybe if you're a kid you would enjoy it. Okay, here's some of the games. Which one shall we try? Let's try the mushroom jumping one. Mushroom trampoline. Let's just go straight in. Um, okay. There's no jump button. Oh my god, that animation! Oh my god! <laughs> oh, wow! That's... Oh, wow. That's horrible. Oh my god, that hurts my eyes. Oh, you can't jump at all. You have to find the mushrooms to jump on. This is painful. I'm not even going to get to the end. Oh wow, I didn't even finish. Should we have a look at a different one? Let's try this one. Go fly water rocket. Okay, it looks very Mario Party. Is it just a mash the buttons one? Oh no! I shouldn't have pressed that so early. Let's try that one again. Let's try that one again. I'm presuming... Oh, can't be bothered to read the rules. Oh, whoops. I went out. Okay. Game rules. Fly the rocket to the goal line. A pushes the pump. B launches the rocket. Easy. And then we'll do one more. And then I'll call it a night. So... Oh, and you have to do it, like, in time as well. You can't just get it all the way up to the top. Right, last one. Which one shall we try? Ah, yeah, from the Simpsons Arcade game. Let's try this totem pole one. Let's see what that's about. Let's read the rules this time. It's a race to carve a totem pole out of a log. How to play. Press A to carve the log. Okay. Is that all there is to it? Oh. Okay. Yay! I came first. That is the height of entertainment. And that is where we are going to end the stream. So thank you everyone who came by tonight and watched me play some GBA games for a few hours and get a little bit sidetracked as well. Yes, thanks for joining. Nice to nice to meet you for the first time. And I'll see you all again very soon. Stay tuned to my YouTube channel as well because I've got a very exciting video coming on Friday. And thanks to Quang, I'll have a very exciting video coming in a few weeks time as well. So I'll see you all again soon.